talking. So during breathing, it's when you breathe out that you get the waste and toxic matters out of your body. Somebody need to breathe out. Somebody need to release some things this morning. Somebody need to let it go because you're breathing and you've been holding your breath and that thing is full of carbon dioxide now. It's stifling you. It's poisoning you. But you're still holding it inside. And that's why we need a spirit of forgiveness. You need to breathe out. What is pastor talking about all this biology and all these kinds of things today? Well, it's simply to tell you that just as there is natural breathing, there is such a thing as spiritual breathing. Spiritual breathing, just like your natural breathing, is also important. Spiritual breathing, just like your natural breathing, involves a twin cycle. But you say, Pastor, what is this twin cycle that is the, 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 the inseparable parts of my spiritual breathing? Well, I've come to say to everybody this morning, your spiritual breathing consists of two operations the first one as you breathe in hallelujah that's your bible reading that's when you take in the word of god hallelujah the word of god tells us jesus was speaking to the devil he says it is written man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of god it therefore means that it's from the word of god just like your inhalation cycle that you get the fresh oxygen coming into your body that nourishes you it is from the Word of God as you read the Word of God as you take in the Word of God as you spend time in the Word of God that's how you get your nourishment for your spiritual man and so every believer if you're gonna be strong if you're gonna be healthy you need to be reading the Word of God you need to be in the Word of God. I came to tell you this morning that since the, the year has begun, there's some of us in here who have not read the Word of God. That means you have not breathed in anything. That means you've been holding your breath for 16 days now. And that's impossible. You are about to suffocate. As a matter of fact, when the body is starved of oxygen for a prolonged period of time, the brain shuts down. You go brain dead. You become a vegetable. Can you imagine if you're not reading the word of God, what has happened to you? There are three things that the word of God commands that are indispensable. They, they, they must happen. One of them is reading the word of God because man shall not live by bread alone. You got to read the word of God. The other one is this. Prayer. Jesus stole a parable telling them that his listeners, man ought always to pray. You got to pray all the time. The apostle Paul said it this way. He says, pray without in other words, keep on breathing. Keep on exhaling. Because that's what prayer does. In the twin cycle of inhalation and exhalation, in the spirit, on the spiritual plane or level, we inhale the word of God and we exhale our prayer. I'm going to tell you something this morning. Prayer is so critical and crucial that Jesus, as he was speaking to his disciples, he said, when you pray, you have got to say. That's the first thing. He says, you've got to speak. You've got to verbalize or vocalize something. Not just that you've got to speak, not just that it must be uh, audible or something that escapes your lips. But prayer is the means whereby we are able to cast our burdens on the Lord. Because it's through prayer 
that we tell God, Father, I want you to take this from me. Father, there is this that is happening to me that is making my life uncomfortable. There is this that is all up in my space that is taking advantage of me and I want you to deliver me. I want you to take this out of my way. I want you to remove this from my life. It's through prayer that we release the pressure that has been building up in the spirit and in your life. The believer who fails to pray is a believer who is unhealthy because you, you might be able to just do one. But I want to let you know this morning, everybody sees this? You cannot exist on Bible reading alone. This is you. You read your Bible. Read your Bible some more. I read my Bible some more. But if you continue just taking in and taking in and taking in, Jeremiah says that your word is like a fire that shut up in my bone. At some point, because God didn't make you to just be in this state, you have got to pray. Can you hear that? You got to release it. At some point, you got to go on your knees. And you got to cry out to God. At some point, you got to have a little talk with Jesus so that it can be made right. If you were only to pray, this is how your life would be because there is nothing coming in. There is nothing to nourish you. There is nothing to fill you up. There is nothing to expand you. There is nothing to inflate you. So your life would be flat and your life would be filmsy. There would be no firmness, no structure to your life. Is this you? You've been praying. You've been releasing. You've been griping. You've been complaining. But you need to be nourished. You need to go into the Word of God. But what happens if all you do is read the Word of God? I read it in the morning. I read it in the midday. I read it in the afternoon. I read it in the night and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season his leaf also shall not wither but whatsoever he doeth <laughs> Somebody said, no, pastor. No, pastor. All right, all right, all right. I, I realize that you're traumatized. But you know what I'm getting at. You know what I'm getting at. I, I wanted you to hear it. I wanted you to see it. Because of... Uh, somebody say, go ahead. <laughs> all right. All right, all right, all right. Let me tell you something. You can read the Word of God how much you want to. But unless you can begin to pray the Word of God, and sometimes prayer is like this. It's a breeze. You can just pray. Sometimes prayer is like this. Ah, because it's a pain, because you struggle, because of what you've been going through. But God hears that. He hears it when it's silent. He hears it when it's easy for you to commune with Him. He hears it when it's a struggle for you to commune with Him. But let me tell you something. However it is for you, you got to commune with God. You got to take your breath. And that's what I wanted to tell you today. Breathe.